Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. We are getting ready for FIFA 23, but the way we're doing that today is looking back at FIFA 22 and looking at some of the most used players during the entire year of FIFA 22. Of course, we have guys like Mbappe, Conte, Neymar, Messi on this list, but it's different every year as to which players are the most popular, and especially this year in FIFA 23 with a brand new chemistry system, and just with the fact that people usually start a brand new FIFA using cards that they ended using in FIFA 22, because that's the meta that they're used to, so they kind of use those cards to start the brand new year, that kind of needs to be where we are thinking right now as we head into FIFA 23, and just kind of renew our mindset of thinking about what cards are probably going to be overpowered and meta from the start, and what cards people will be going for at the start to help us make inv informed investments and advised trades on the FIFA 23 market. It's also fun to look back at some of the fun cards that we've had during the year in FIFA 22. So we're going to do that today in this video. The videos are flying up on the channel right now. So if you're excited for FIFA 23, hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. Let's first take a look at the players that were used the most in FIFA 22. That's why I showed you this guy Mbappe first because he is the front runner and it's not even close. First most used player in FIFA 22, Kylian Mbappe. Now, the, the, I'm getting these stats from Footbin, right? Footbin has this thing called PGP, Player Game Performance. Basically, it's under the tab, Players. You hit a PGP and then click on Games. And this sorts by the number of games played. And Footbin calculates this with some of the stuff that they have on the market. All of the cards that get listed up, they kind of add all those stats together. And... Boom, you get, a, you get a number. It's maybe not 100% accurate, but it gives you a good idea of the most used cards. And who's surprised here, right? Mbappe, N'Golo Kante, Messi, Ronaldo, Neymar, Varane, Hakimi, Golds. You, you start off with a lot of gold cards because especially in the early game, that's what people are using the most, right? Gold cards are still the most widely used cards for a very long time, at least the first few months of the game. Then after that, people start having only special cards in their team as you get a lot of promos going on. But it's really interesting to look down through this list, and, and we'll definitely do that. Um, and it's also very interesting to compare this list to previous years. And I think what you see a lot in this top, like even 10, like look at the top 10 cards that we have right here. In the top five, we have three PSG players, Mbappe, Messi, Neymar. And then in the top 10, we have two more, Hakimi and Donnarumma. Marquinhos just outside of the top 10. Kim Pembe, of course. I mean, kind of the center back that came on the scene in FIFA 22. Absolutely going to be a very popular card in FIFA 23. So let's kind of start from the top down here and think about this with FIFA 23 in mind. Are some of these players going to be this popular in FIFA 23 again, and I honestly think that they will, especially with the new chemistry system and how those links are going to work up together. Cards like Mbappe, Messi, Neymar, Hakimi, Donnarumma, Marquinhos are going to be very popular in meta squads right away, and they're going to stay very popular in FIFA 23 because of that new chemistry system, making it a little bit harder to do some hybrid squads. Now, you might have the argument, Nate, after we've seen some of these ratings, like let's just look this up, right? FIFA 23 ratings on EA's website, these are not good, right? You look you look at these ratings for some of these cards, especially for Messi, and you're looking at a huge downgrade, and you're looking at a work rate change as well, probably gonna make his card a lot cheaper, right? If his one of his secondary positions is center attacking mid, I think this card will still be used as a great cam in game, but he's gonna be cheaper, and, you know, it's probably not going to be as meta in the power curve forever. He's going to get surpassed by other informs and other special cards that he may have and other players that may come out as well as people change their teams. But you're going to have your PSG guys being very, very popular in FIFA 23 once again. And I can't stress that enough. I really feel like the PSG links, the Manchester City links, Real Madrid links are going to be the top three clubs in this next FIFA, and the club links are going to be more important than ever. Like, you see in the top list you hear, we have Jonathan Bamba, we have Jordan Amavi, a couple Liverpool players, Mike Magnan, Hamari Traore was one of the most used cards. You, you know what's also interesting about this? Look at some of the other League One cards in here that you have. Um, and, you know, even before we talk about the nation, right, there's a clear cut nation winner that is in here that is the most popular nation. But you have some, you know, just random cards in here. Like, again, Doozy's not really random, but League One, you know, the Hamari Traore that came out early on in the year. Um, you know, and again, let, let's just talk about nation because this is another very interesting and very 
honestly, it's, a, it's something that happens every single year, and it's specifically the past two years, is the national the nationality of France. French teams in FIFA are, for some reason, just the go-to. I would say Premier League and French teams are definitely the go-to in FIFA. Look how many French cards you have in here. I mean, it would be easier to count the non-French cards that are listed in this top list. I mean, you know, the Ganduzi card that we mentioned, the Mike Magnan as the top, I believe he's the f top French goalkeeper apart from Donnarumma. Uh, you know, Mike Magnan is going to be a big card in, in FIFA 23 because of the fact that he is a French goalkeeper. And if you're trying to make some sort of hybrid with maybe a Varane um, and, you know, in your team or maybe some other French cards that are in there, especially with EA changing the chemistry requirements to only needing two players from the same nation to get one chemistry point, that will make people using French goalkeepers even more important and will make them even more desirable in the early game. So 34 million games for Mike Magnan, that's pretty crazy. But then you keep going down this list, Thomas Delane, the left wing back from the League One French, Moussa Diaby, French, Romain Alessandrini in the Chinese League, French card, 31 million games played, making like the top 25 of most popular players used in, in FIFA 22. Mukiele's right wing back card. Joao Cancelo is a team of the year card, is the highest team of the year to get in here. That's pretty crazy. Teo Hernandez left back card. It's all about the France. It's all about the League One, Premier League, and especially some of the teams inside of those two leagues. And I would throw, I would throw, honestly, the La Liga and specifically Real Madrid into that list for FIFA 23 because of that Vinicius Junior rating, which actually does not show up here on the EA website. Um, I think it might show some of their ambassadors. Does it show the ratings for these ambassadors? But like Vinny Junior with his 86 rated card, it's on EA's Twitter. Um, his card is going to be, in my opinion, this year, probably up in this top five. I think Vinny Jr.'s gold card is going to be a top five most used card in FIFA 23. I think he's going to overtake Neymar. I really do. Neymar still has the PSG links, but, you know, the Ferland Mendy, the Antonio Rudiger, the um, Varane, or sorry, not the Varane, the Benzema, I think, with the how good the Benzema card looks as a starter card this year and with how crazy Vinny looks, I mean, Benzema's the number one top rated card in the game with a huge you know, plus four pace boost, plus two overall, plus two shooting and, and passing. Looks like a really, really good card. Not the most super meta, but it's France and it's Real Madrid, and that's going to be huge for building squads with that new chemistry system. So I think if I were you, get ready to see a lot of PSG, a lot of Manchester City, a lot of Real Madrid. And honestly, what's going to be a bit unfortunate is cl clubs and teams that don't look that unique to what we maybe have seen before because people are right away going to be worried about getting the, the total highest amount of chemistry points possible. Until that changes, I think you're not going to see a lot of, you know, changes in a lot of the meta teams. A lot of them are going to be the same. Now, speaking of Vinny Jr., his most used card on this list is the 83 rated inform with 26 million games. That was his top rated version. Uh, one thing you'll notice that we're going to take a look back at last year's most popular cards in a second. Paul Pogba didn't even make the, the first page this year. He was a top 10 card in FIFA 21. Pretty crazy uh, to see that. Ginola was the only footy. Oh, uh, excuse me. I missed the 85 Vinny Jr. 85 Vinny Jr. right here is 33 million games played for his second inform on that first page. So that was Vinny and of course Ferland Mendy. Were, Ferland Mendy was like rounding out the top 10. Um, you just see so much French in here, right? Though so that's the biggest thing to focus on. And that's where the hype's gonna be again to start in FIFA 23 because it's some of the easiest cards to link together in teams with the new chemistry system. So like I just said, I wanna take a look back at FIFA 21's most popular player list. Speaking of Varane, speaking of some of these cards that are in here, like just take it. This is from the same video right now that we're doing a year ago. Varane had 89 million games in FIFA 21. Varane in FIFA 22, only 58 million games, but Mbappe had that 90 million game threshold. Mbappe, again, in my opinion, you, you, you've seen the ratings release, right? This card is clear cut number one best in the game, hands down, and it's going to stay that way. Mbappe is probably going to be the most used gold card. Um, in the game again in, in FIFA 23, in my opinion. But it's just interesting interesting to see how that changes, right? Um, Mbappe was fourth uh, in FIFA 21. And Conte, Neymar, always going to be up there. Ferland Mendy, couple cards that you don't see at all in this year's FIFA 22 top list. Marcus Rashford 
really, really overpowered in FIFA 21. Kyle Walker at center back, really overpowered in FIFA 21. There's the Paul Pogba in there as well, Sadio Mane. Even had Joe Gomez, Bruno Fernandes, and Virgil van Dijk in there. So there was a lot more Premier League hype in FIFA 21. But as you can tell in 22, the PSG hype with Messi, with the Mbappe upgrades, with Neymar looking so good, Hakimi getting a really good card. A lot of people went to those PSG links. It also helped that EA did sign a deal with PSG to have some exclusive rights and some access there. But, you know... I think that kind of PSG hype, the French League One, that stuff that was really big in 22 is going to continue to 23. That's kind of the bottom line there. So again, the reason why we're doing this and we're talking about it is because it's very important to look at these cards and to say, all right, which ones at the beginning of FIFA 23 are people going to be going out and looking for and, and going after? And I really think that a guy like this Ferland Mendy is going to be even more popular this year with the Real Madrid links and the French nationality. Huge, 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 huge card for chemistry and for building up to 33 chem in people's teams. You know, a little bit of a cheeky one too that I would watch out for would be Antonio Rudiger. Brand new transfer card. I used him in the beta. He was very, very good. I don't know what his final rating is. I think it's like either 83 or 84, maybe 85 potentially. A little bit of an upgrade for him. Um, I know he's German, but he's going to have the Real Madrid links and his card is going to be very useful for chemistry and it's going to be very, very good. Definitely a meta type center back. Um, again, they're boosting some of the pace on center backs as well. He does not have a good pace split, but he's got great strength, great base defending and physical stats, and he's a really, really good early game center back. That's a sneaky type of card. It's, he's probably going to be like 50, 60 K, maybe even a little bit more. Kind of kind of like a sleeper to Militao, right? We saw Militao's leaked card stats, um, you know, a little earlier. He was like 84 rated and his card looks disgustingly good. But a Rudiger might be kind of a an overpowered like one to watch uh, on the little bit of a cheaper tier than Militao, in my opinion. Uh, you know, coming up in this year's game of FIFA 23 as well. So that's kind of the mindset. Again, that's we have to think about the meta because that's where most people's minds are going to gravitate towards. Now, as we move on throughout the year, right, we get lots of great SBCs. We get lots of great promo cards and people build their squads around those cards. And what I want to do next is take a look at the most popular and least popular cards also on Footbin. And, you know, this looking at these cards just kind of teaches you and it kind of shows you when an SBC comes out, when an objective comes out, like it's all about the upvotes and the downvotes and how much hype a player has and how much potential a certain type of card can move the market. A player that never has pace, that gets a flashback or that gets a card that upgrades their pace. In the case of this, Benzema was a perfect example of a card that just broke the game already pretty decent but he just needed pace right we all remember this sbc everybody did it during black friday incredible incredible price and this is what we're talking about with popularity here 32,000 upvotes the thumbs up on footbin right and only 2,000 downvotes that is what this little popularity score as you can see here the little fire emoji is calculating inside of here so i want to take a look through some of the, these cards again what do you notice out of the top five cards that are on here three of them are french benzema fakir Hassem Awar, you've got Jonathan Klaas, right? Very popular card as well. It's all about the French meta, I'm telling you guys. It's crazy how that exploded in FIFA 22 like mad. It was still popular in FIFA 21, but it was even more popular in FIFA 22. Again, Benzema, number one card, 30,000 upvotes. I guess you could say a 30,000 like score. Nabil Fakir, 27,000 like score. And it was just because these were such early on and they were such good value uh, for both of these cards and they ended up linking together. I mean, I know that Fakir was out earlier uh, than Benzema was, but a lot of people ended up having both those cards in their teams for a long time. Flashback Neymar is up here on the list as well. Of course, you know, less um, sh like passing and a downgrade or an upgrade on shooting and an upgrade on pace is why a lot of people went for this, but you had way less passing. Definitely felt that on the card when you used them in game, but this was just a legendary, this was our legendary flashback SBC in uh in fifa 22 i mean we had the ronaldo in fifa 21 that was like the big legend and then this last year in 22 we had neymar and conte i don't know if conte flashback is on this list um no he's not he's not at least at the top 
but that, that, that Neymar was just a huge, huge flashback SBC. So something to notice there. Now going next down the list, this is a little bit of a kind of cool information. Nicholas Summer, you might be like, Nate, who in the world is this guy? This guy actually plays in uh, the third German league. He is a Twitch streamer. He streams in German and uh, his FIFA 23 card has more pace than Ronaldo and Messi. So that's kind of his claim to fame. Uh, but that's kind of cool. And he's got a lot of thumbs up there because uh, of his being him being a streamer, which is pretty dope. And then again, you go in here and look at another French meta card, Hassem Awar, very popular winter wild cards, SBC, great price. Again, that's why a lot of these get thumbs up, right? Is the great price and the great links and the meta aspect of the card. Ronaldo Gold, I was surprised to see how many thumbs up he had. I really just think this is because he's back in the Premier League. Last year, there's a lot of hype around that. Jonathan Kloss, great SBC. Goss Seth, definitely. There's some funny ones in here too, right? Getting the Moments Silver Stars card uh, for the dynamic image, 100%. You've got Akin Fenema in here. You've got Chiellini, Phil Jones, right? There's some kind of like meme almost cards that are in here as well. Uh, Conte Gold and Conte Team of the Year have a, a lot of thumbs up. There's the, the Neres card, the Bernardo Silva, the Mares flashback. I didn't do, but a lot of people did. David De Gea Player of the Month and Kunku Player of the Month and then Insigne Premium. So those are all like the upvoted cards, right? Now this is where it gets fun too. Let's look at the downloaded, the downvoted cards. The most disliked cards on FIFA 22. You know why that man is top Mason Greenwood number one for good reason. Now number two, and we talked about this a couple weeks ago, this guy is pretty new to FIFA 22, right? He's only been out in the game for like a month and a half since footies came out. And 22,000 in the negative downvotes, 24,000 downvotes for Ferland Mendy. But really the reason he got so many downvotes right away is because his SBC was it, like outrageously overpriced, but EA knew what they were doing. And of course his SBC quickly dropped down in value a lot after EA started supplying all the high rated fodder and putting all those crazy cards in packs. But a lot of the times when you see these, these SBCs with very high amounts of downvotes, it's because they were just too expensive. They might have been, like if this Aubameyang SBC was dirt cheap, like 100K like the Benzema was, or maybe even 150K, this would be a really loved SBC. It's all about the price. But as you can tell in here too, you know, there's a lot of cards that are in here that, you know, aren't also that hype for a lot of people team people's teams. This Gundawan, very overpriced. Again, that's why I got a lot of downvotes. There's also some funny ones in here too. Uh, the Premier League Player of the Month, Ronaldo. This was dropped really early in the game, and I think people were not happy with how expensive it was for good reason. Uh, you've got Kimpembe in here, which if you're wondering why I'm way down on coins, uh, get ready because we did something crazy. Check out the Clips channel for some information on why I'm down on coins. We made this guy go extinct uh, yesterday. Actually, you know what? Let's see if I can find it on the graph. Yeah, see right here? When he went extinct at like 2 and 19? Yeah, that was that was us on stream. But anyways, you know, a lot of downvotes in this Kempembe card because he was just kind of known as, as the rat, right? And a lot of people downvoted that card because of how ratty he was. You've got some Mbappe cards that are in here with some downvotes uh, and then some overpriced or just not very... Uh, good value objectives. This Crusa was not very good at all. Pedro Poro, Mavdidi, the Mason Mount showdown, the Jordan security ones to watch, not good. Lucas and the Mensha team of the group stage, not good. So, I mean, it's kind of, it's fun to look through some of these SBCs, but it's also, you can learn a lot. You really do. Um, and even think about which cards that you used throughout the year this year in FIFA 22 that kind of, you know, help out that opinion and, and maybe prove a little bit more that what a lot of people use, it kind of falls around in like the same, you know, same circumstances, right? A lot of people gravitate towards the same cards because of what the meta is and what people are being told the meta is as well. It's a huge part about it. So again, just to wrap it up, French, League One, Premier League, and especially from those main clubs, because I really feel like with the way the new chemistry system is looking, it's there's going to be so much focus on these clubs, guys, really. I think that's where you're going to have to be watching in the beginning of the game of FIFA 23 is watching these players from these clubs, even if they're not like that insane of a player. I, I don't know. Let's think of a gold card really quick here from PSG. Icardi transferred. He's not on PSG anymore. Maybe like gold Nuno Menge, which gold Nuno Menge, I don't think is going to have that great of a card. But for a starter team, he might like, let's say he's 80 rated. This card doesn't look bad, but at the start of FIFA 23, he might be extra expensive because people starting to try to build around PSG links and getting one or two other cards in their team to get some of those chemistry links to get all their players on a certain number of chemistry. You might see a card like this a little more popular in FIFA 23, 
that being said, price could be going up. So that's kind of the premise of today's video, just to start to get you guys thinking about this stuff. As we see more ratings, as we start to build starter squads, we will of course dive deeper into this, of course, but it's also fun to just go back and look at what cards have been very popular, very used, and also downvoted during FIFA 22. A little good trip down memory lane. So if you enjoyed this video today, smash the thumbs up on it if it was helpful. Again, smash the thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions or comments and subscribe if you're new. It's been Nate Foot Account and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.